I'm Sarah, I'm 14, and I started in high school this year, and I would like writing stories, and I have for a while, and my dad's favorite story of this is last year, I went to him saying, Dad, you have always talked about National Novel Writing Month, and, I, and I'll do it if you will. And as he said, he was basically screwed. We were writing <laughs> novels. <laughs> and we did, and I wrote a novel that was a sci-fi, novel said in the future about everyone is perfect except for one girl and I also and I wrote I try I started a novel in the summer that I wasn't able to complete because it was getting really kind of trashy <laughs> but and I not like that there was a lot of, there was too many swear words too soon uh, okay. and gotcha. stuff and but I wrote a bunch of short stories it's something that was popular in the early 2000s called like lyrical stories where you put like lyrics in the paragraphs done a lot of them and I actually have a reading of my novel I'm writing now which is really confusing to explain. It's about it's about an aromantic girl, an aromantic basically means you don't have sexual or romantic attraction, who has this curse on her and she ends up kind of well she ends up having this world of think that he's her mate. He, she's his mate where she, when she isn't, when he has a mate, just all this confusingness ensues. So I've got a reading of the first chapter, and if there's any children here, you should probably cover their ears because the first word is a swear word. Okay. Okay, no, the children, children aren't here. That's good. We're good. Good timing. Okay. So chapter one. Shit. I'm dying. I'm dying. My cells are deteriorating. I'll be dead at midnight. And then they'll have to bury me, and I won't be able to reincarnate until everyone I've ever met is dead. Oh, no, 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 no. This isn't good. Why did he have to die? And at nine o'clock as well. Okay. Pull it together, Charity. You can do this. Grab a book, kiss him, and live your life until he died. You have to repeat the process all over again. It's simple. I survey the area, and I see that there are many guys, most of them young. Well, all of them are younger than me, at least. But the sound of a gunshot distracts me. Great. Always someone to save, even when I'm trying to save myself. I mutter under my breath and race towards the action. I follow the sound to a house a few blocks away, surrounded by a large forest, and find myself at the source of the conflict. A group of men... All, all dressed in normal drab, restraining an almost naked teenage boy, one of them holding a gun to his head. What the hell? I, I stay back, as the last time I tried to save someone by running in, I got shot and healed in front of a bunch of strangers, and the person I was trying to save was killed. Who do you think you are, coming into our land and bringing the devil, the work of the devil with you? The man with the gun shot, the, the man holding the gun demands at the strangely calm looking boy. I am not the spawn of the devil, and you're and my pack is owned and lived in this land much longer than you. You are the evil one, dragging me out here just because I'm different. He spits at the man. Is he insane? They're going to kill him. Don't you speak to me like that! You are a mutt, and you are not going to be imprinting on my daughter! The man roars, moving his finger to the trigger. I race in and knock the man over, grabbing his gun. Disarmed and confused, the man takes a swing at me that I easily, that I easily block. I hit him in the jaw and then hit him over the head with the gun, knocking him out. I turn to the other men, pointing the gun at them. Is there a problem here, sirs? I ask sarcastically. They look at me, look at their unconscious friend, and look at each other, then bolt. I fire a few warning shots so they know that I mean business and they shouldn't come back. But I know they're going to. They always do. And normally they bring lots of nice policemen. I turn my attention to the boy and realize they didn't even tie him up. What the hell did you do and why are you still on the ground? They didn't even tie you up. Now get out. They're going to come back and they're going to bring numbers. The boy suddenly realizes the situation he is currently in and bolts up from the ground. Good. Now do you know if the house is empty? I ask him, pointing to the house behind us. What? He looks at me like I have six heads. But like I'm some sort of a mortal girl who is not a mortal at the moment is currently dying happens to know a lot about hiding and running from the police. Yeah, kind of like that. The house. Is it empty? We need supplies and clothes. I gesture to him standing in his tidy whities. You need to get out of t this town right now and get somewhere safe. Somewhere you have protection. Does this place exist or does everyone in this town hate you? Uh, yeah, I think it is. His wife should be working his stuff. He explains, putting it not out, man, but I cut, cut him off. Okay, you don't need to give me a full life story of this guy. Yes or no? Is this house empty? Uh, yeah. Okay, good. Now, I call not in reaching into his, I gesture towards the unconscious man on the ground, pants to get hit. Wait a minute, never mind. This idiot left his front door open. How do you know all this? Are you a runaway or something? No offense if you are, I mean. Just wondering. The still unnamed boy asked me as he walks into the kitchen, pulling on a shirt he found upstairs. I, I was, a few times actually. 
I answer as I fill my bag with granola bars and some fruit. Cans are just slow us down. I don't plan on taking longer than nightfall to get this kid out of here anyway. I can't take longer than that. But not at the moment, though. At the moment, I'm an adventurer, going to climb mountain tomorrow. That is if I don't die tonight and have to wait a hundred years. But I've still got time to kiss someone, right? Okay, so you, do you need me to do anything? Like secure the house, maybe? He asked me. No, this isn't a zombie movie. We aren't staying here. We can't. But you can check the gun cabin in the living room for any hunting knives or extra ammo. We can't afford to carry an extra gun because it would only weigh us down and attract attention. But some less noticeable weapons and spare bullets might save our asses. Oh, right. That makes sense, I think. He mumbles, heading into the living room. Yes, it does. Now move it. We need. We have to get out of here. We'll be hearing sirens any second, I show. I don't mean to be rude, but I don't have time to be friendly. I need to get him somewhere safe, wherever that might be, and hopefully still have time to save myself. So, that safe place I was talking about, do you have one? I call into the living room. Uh, yeah, it's on the edge of town, about 35 miles from here. Normally we don't have too many guests without warning, though, he answers, walking into the living room with a few rounds and a couple of sturdy looking hunting knives. Well, you'll have to make an accession just as once, but don't worry, I'm not going to be there long. I'm saving you, then I'm going on my merry way, three towns over. I'm just here for coffee. Can I just call? Maybe there's a, there's a phone here. No, you idiot. The police can check to see if we're still here or how long ago we were here. It'll only make them easier for them to find us. We don't have time. Now, come on. We need to go. Now, I command, shouldering my bag and running out the door. How do you even know they're going to get the police? Or if they're even coming back? The whole n uh, coming back. You could have scared them off for all we know. Taught them a good lesson. And now they'll just leave me alone, he replies, running after me. Whatever you did, it almost got you killed, and I knocked our friend out and fired warning shots that the whole neighborhood probably heard. Trust me, the police are coming, I explained, heading towards the entrance of the forest, and he followed behind me. Within a few minutes, we have a steady routine. Walk, carefully but quickly, speeding up just a bit when we hear the sirens. After I whisper a quick, I told you so. This pace continues for a few hours, and I almost forget the teensy weensy little insignificant fact that I'm still dying. Does anybody have any questions for Sarah? I, I have a comment. I love the I love the really strong female voice in it and, and the character. That she's like so resourceful and I got a, I get a real sense of her right from the get go. And I want to know what happens next. <laughs> what? I want to know what happens next. Okay. And, and my favorite part is how you keep referring to that. She keeps the character keeps referring to the fact that she's dying. She might have to wait a hundred years to be reincarnated, and she does little, like two or three times. It's, it's sort of the thread that keeps it all together, and um, I like that. That's very clever. Mm -hmm. So, how far along in this novel are you? Uh, so far, I've written eleven thousand. Uh, no, yeah, 11,789 of 15,000 words. Oh, wow. wow. And so are you shaping up to be completed by Sunday? Yeah, I should be. Awesome. Wow, that's great. Thanks. Not once, ladies and gentlemen, but twice. Yeah, and apparently this is your book. you will come back and talk to us again later, like when your book is, is finished, or after you're published, or you'll probably come back for like Midland Reads, when you're famous, something like that. But yeah, anyway, that was great. So thank you. Thank you very much. Let's give Sarah another round.